Hello and welcome everybody to the Parker Office Hour on June 19, 2023. If you don't know what year it is, now you know. Um, and today we have a bunch of new things uh, that were happening in Parker Agent and also a new Parker release to talk about. And then Yomi has some nice and exciting future endeavors uh, to talk about for for Parker. Uh, first of all, yeah, we can talk about the Parker agent and then we'll dive into Parker release and uh, the things that he wants to talk about. Um, and for the agent, Frederick wants to to tell us about what the team has been, been up to in the past couple of weeks. So the team has been working on uh, or towards a next uh, release for quite some time now. Um, so there were a couple of things that we Kind of set out to do one was we wanted to support short-lived processes better so these are processes that essentially um, appear and disappear within the profiling duration so for those who may not know um, the profiling duration in the agent is essentially every 10 seconds we profile the entire host and um, you know we Kind of initialize all the data structures at the beginning you can think of it as that um, we then let all the data get filled up and then at the end of those 10 seconds we kind of read all of this data kind of how often have we seen each stack trace basically um, and then we send that off to uh, the parker server the problem with that is um, if within this period of time a process starts and dies we have a problem because we can no longer at the end of this uh, period figure out you know, um, what were the binaries that this process uh, was using, what is the you know, Kubernetes metadata or whatever it is, right? Um, we can no longer kind of make sense of what this, what this process actually did. Um, and this happens surprisingly often. Even in Kubernetes environments, we actually see this all the time, um, especially um with container runtimes um, and this is something that we actually just this morning uh kind of the very last piece discovered um and it makes perfect sense once you know how containers or you know once you dive deeper into how containers work so essentially what we see very often is that um we first see a process starting with the run c binary which if you know is essentially the thing that pivots um, into what we formally understand as, um, as con Linux containers. Um, and what that means is that when the process is started, it has a process ID, and it has the run C binary mapped. And then it pivots into actually running the what is in the container, right? And therefore becomes a different binary um, from Parker Agent's understanding. And so these are the kind of uh, weird things that can happen um, that we that we need to handle. And yeah, so a big part of this release is being able to handle these kinds of circumstances much better. There are still fundamental race conditions that we'll never be able to remove. However, um, we've gotten much better at it. So um, very, very short-lived processes, anything that lives um you know up to at least 100 milliseconds we'll probably be able to handle now anything that's less than 100 milliseconds um there are too many race conditions at hand uh that we can probably um ever support those in a perfect way we can still in and in, we still catch them most of the time but it can happen um that we don't so this was one of the big things that's going to be released in this release the next one is better just-in-time compiler support. So um, one uh, kind of big user in the community was the Julia community here um, that kind of helped us uh, understand and actually test this feature. So the big is issue before was we could only um, unwind um, stacks in Dwarf or only unwind stacks um, using frame pointers. And so, but what often happens with just-in-time compilers like Node.js or um, Julia 
the just-in-time compiled part has frame pointers, but then the runtime part, like the V8 runtime in the case of Node.js or the Julia runtime, they don't have frame pointers and they need to be unwinded by using dwarf unwinding. <laughs> and so this new feature essentially intelligently understands when do we need to switch from frame pointer unwinding to dwarf unwinding and potentially back. Like it can have arbitrary amounts of uh, switches basically in, in the stacks. Um, and so, yeah, this is now essentially supported. So now we actually basically under, uh, actually support uh, just-in-time uh, compilers. Before it was like, if everything has frame pointers, if everything has dwarf, um, it was going to work. But now, you know, we, we support reality because <laughs> we can't really uh, control this. Um, and then other than that, we fixed a ton, a ton, a ton of bugs. Um, particularly around uh, normalization as well as uh, metadata. So normalization issues, um, they essentially resulted in data not ending up appearing in Parka because when we um, encounter normalization issues, we drop those stacks because there's no guarantee that any of the data um, in a stack is correct if we can't normalize. Um, and then the other thing, um, is over time, we observed that sometimes Kubernetes metadata, for example, disappears. Um, and there were various um, reasons for all of this. Kimada actually did several very, very big refactorings um, in order to make this possible. So shout out to him, but also shout out to the whole team because this was a massive team effort. I think that's all the major um, themes of this release. I think Kimala is actually preparing the release as we speak. Um, so hopefully it'll still go out today. Otherwise, um, it's probably going out early tomorrow. Okay. Any questions? I don't have any questions, but I'm super eager as a user to finally <laughs> deploy these, uh, deploy the new version and get all of these uh, improvements in because, yeah, it, it's been a while and I know how hard the team has worked to to get there. So I'm, yeah, again, eager to finally be able to use it. Cool. No, yeah, sounds great. Uh, so that will be Parka version 0.20 um, that you want to look out for. Um, in the next hours or days, or hopefully hours. Fingers crossed. Cool. Um, then let's talk about the latest uh, Parka release that we had. So last week, we finally uh, cut version 0 018. Um, and yeah, I think it was a long time in the making. <laughs> For some reason, we, we took the time, but it's been a good one. And uh, yeah, one, one of the things that Yomi can also tell us more about is like part, Parka will automatically use the system settings for like and dark themes. Um, and then for kind of the backend side of things, one thing I'm, I'm super excited about is uh, having Prometheus histograms um, as native histograms. So uh, going forward, we are going to be able to see uh, a lot higher fidelity of of observations um, and and be able to really tell more accurately what the p99 or p95 p90 etc actually looks like um, on various endpoints so basically everything that's instrumented through a grpc interceptor or middleware if you want to call it that um, will have these new native histograms so if you use them anywhere <laughs> to um, alert or instrument Parker itself, and just be aware that the metrics uh, of those histograms are going, going to change in the V018 release. Uh, and then one thing that we kind of ran into now also next to demo.parka.dev, uh, um, running the demo instance for Parker, uh, we also now run demo.parka.dev slash devel, where we uh, run the latest version of, of Parker that is automatically 
deployed through Argo CD. Uh, kudos to Maxim for setting all of this up. So we don't even have to do anything. And within a couple of minutes after something new gets merged into the main branch, um, the, the uh, image gets deployed there. But the point was, um, this was kind of like um, pointing us towards that only API endpoints were served under the slash devel slash API prefix, but everything else also should be served under slash devel um, to be able to just like look at it um, through an ingress uh, proxy. So that has been fixed if you run Parker behind a, a um, yeah, proxy with a different prefix, then things might have gotten uh, a bit different or hopefully easier. Um, yeah, lots of little things, bug fixes. Um, and big shout out to the front end team. As you can see, they've been super, super busy. Um, and yeah, getting, getting all of those uh, fixes in. Um, but everything else also is super nice. And, and Marcel has, has done a tremendous amount of, of PRs next to Maxime, obviously, <laughs> who, who keeps on, on pushing things forward um, from the community side. So shout out to, to those contributors for sure. Um, I think that's kind of the gist of, of that release. Um, we can talk about UI things a bit more and then also about something exciting and new that's in the works. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to Yomi. Yes, thank you. Um, so basically, um, like Matthias said, uh, we now have the functionality where Paka will automatically read the system settings to determine the mode for Packer. Um, based on the feedback that we had from the last Packer office hours, um, we implemented a change whereby once you load Packer up, it uses your system settings. Then you have the functionality or the option rather to to choose whether you want to use the system settings or explicitly set it to a light or a dark mode. Um, second to that, um, like Matthias just mentioned, now we have like lots of bug fixes uh, on the UI part um like these bug fixes were like little little like things for example like the metrics um, graph not like behaving correctly when you hold the shift button down so thanks to Man uh, monica we have a fix for that um we also had like a fix for the cases whereby the profile selector wasn't displaying correctly at a certain height um i think we actually had a fix for that from an external contributor so that was that was really nice and i think they sent like like two PRs, um, so that's that's nice. Um, and then um, thirdly, which we are really excited to show, is that we've been working on doing a refresh for the Parker um, for the Parker UI. Um, so basically, what we're trying to do now is trying to make the design a bit more cleaner, a bit more easy on the eyes. Um, and right now, it's still in progress because we're still exploring some options for some things on how we want to move forward. But um, we thought to like just like share with the with the community. So let me share my screen. For that. Figma. Yes. Okay, nice. Now you can see my screen. Okay, so basically, um, in terms of like, you know, the, the branding and whatnot, it's still the same. Like the, the top nav bar is still the same. Like there's still like a normal logo, our profiles, like a nav bars, profile target help, and all these like little buttons that help the to start the project, um, the preferences icon, and then the um, theme switcher. Um, the difference between this and uh, current version is uh, instead of the like the you know the black background on the button it's just like a really um light indigo i think indigo but um color on the button so it's really light to look at and not so um heavier the eyes and i think what we've also done is like sort of make all of the cards a bit flat um and then added just a bit of more shadows to like highlight the things that we want users to see which is like the crafts um so we actually have a couple of options that we're exploring um internally and I, we'll, we'll arrive at something soon i hope um for the for the first one um we have the profile type which is um you know 
appears in the same place as it is. We also have the query, but then we also have the filter by function, which um, Matthias has been working on and should be landed soon, I think. Um, but apart from that, the metric graph remains the same. Um, it's, it's a bit more cleaner, but then the probably the change is down towards the you know profile view where we are currently exploring you know having secondary buttons whereby the primary button is still the search button you know um that's like the first thing we want um the users of the app to do and then secondary buttons are like you know buttons for like resetting the view of the graphs um the preferences and being able to share the profile and even maybe adding a panel but then one thing that we've changed, um, at least for this option, is to sort of change how details on a node are being displayed. So currently, you hover on an icicle graph and you get to see all of the details on the, on the tooltip. But for this option, it's sort of like fixed to the top. And that is really helpful, or that could be helpful for um, in Parker instances whereby we have like really long function names um so with this you get to like see all of the function names at a glance and you don't have to like we don't have to concatenate um the function names which can be really helpful um we have like the other details like the cumulative the file the address the binary and the build id in like these little cards so that's that and then for the second button option for the secondary button um secondary buttons um instead of having like that light blue background it's all white um and one thing to note is that for this one because we don't want a situation whereby if you hover on um a node in the icicle graph the icicle graph like jumps up to like accommodate the space that was there we sort of thought to like make this sort of have a fixed height to there so it displays this placeholder if you have nothing selected and then if you select like if you hover on any of the nodes here it populates the data so that's the that's the second um button option still using the same data tooltip option but then um oh yeah we have one more button option sorry um so there's one whereby the buttons are in the middle i'm still still the same um and then this is another one that we're also considering um whereby the data is being populated in a fixed sort of like a bottom bar at the bottom um where as you scroll you know as you scroll it's persistent and you get to see a lot of the information um there um and then there's also another version where it's in a dark mode and then let's see oh yes and then for the bottom bar we also have another one whereby the information instead of being um groups like this in a grid it's actually like stacked and just represented as a line of text. And then finally, um, the last option is still using the functionality of hovering over an ISCO graph to see the, the information. But um, the, the tool tip is actually fixed. It's draggable um, and you can sort of resize it and sort of, for example, you can place it on the right-hand corner of the, of the app itself. So yeah, so those are the explorations that we've been working on internally. And um, I know we've had like a couple of feedback um, internally as, um, concerning the fact that, for example, if we go with the first option, if we go with the first option, yeah, and you happen to like scroll down on the high school graph, it means you get to lose um, like a view of the information and we might be sort of, leaning towards this one whereby the information is right there in front of you anytime you need it um, and you don't have to like scroll up to see um, all the data that you want to see so so yeah basically that's 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 what we've been doing and hopefully um once we like sort of reach an internal like decision on what approach we want to go to we can start implementing this and hopefully you get to see this on on parker real soon so yeah that's that's all any any questions any feedback suggestions um maxime um what, what do you think um as an, as an external contributor
my apologize. I was not super looking. I don't have the focus on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It, it's okay. By the way, for anyone anyone watching, feel free to drop by on Discord and let us know what you think of the uh, options that Yomi just uh, presented. Hopefully, you know this will remove some of the kind of UI idioms that some people have found confusing, like hovering over something and having to hold shift in order to be able to interact with something in the bubble. We've had it several times with Polar Signals um, customers that you know, they just didn't know that this was possible because it wasn't like an, a UI idiom that they weren't used to. And so hopefully by like clicking on something in the UI and that like um, locking it somewhere on the screen, hopefully that will be a um, more natural experience uh, for people. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um... It's a shame I think... that I didn't invent a new UI idiom with the whole shift to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that, but I can see how it is confusing. And I've seen very few people actually make use of it. So there has to be a better way. And I'm super happy we have like these prototypes or mock-ups, et cetera, wireframes um, to, to look at and experiment with. Um, definitely super helpful. Like for, for me, I, I want to see a version of one of them where like for the super white screen, it uses like the white space, but that's just a personal preference, I guess. <laughs> just throwing it out there. <laughs> where would be the white, where would the white sp space be? Exactly. I guess that's a, another fair follow up question. So, yeah, I guess you could use the pop out. Yeah, version. probably. Um, but yeah, I think super, super, super valuable to be able to look at these and and um, kind of get a feel for how it might look like in the future. And yeah, thanks for sharing Yomi with the community. Um, yeah, I think that's that's that. Super exciting. Uh, anything else people want to talk about? Otherwise, we can just open up. Thanks for general Q and A or whatever um yeah anything else i guess not all right then again if you if you have any thoughts on the designs, uh, feel free to reach out on Discord. Uh, that's a good thing anyway. Uh, go on, on on the Discord if you want to talk, um, or let us know on Twitter or Mastodon anywhere. Um, be on the lookout for the Parker Agent B020 release that's going to drop soon. Um, and then we will see each other again in two weeks for the 9 AM UTC version of this call, um, more for APEC and EMEA, whereas this one is EMEA in uh, yeah, Northern and Southern America. So a different time zone, but still we'll meet in two weeks. Um, and until then, again, be on the lookout and, and feel free to, to get in touch on, on Discord, Twitter, GitHub, etc. You know the places. <laughs> All right, well, then have a great day and see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. See ya.